all this is dr mobin sayed from drbean.com welcome to one more show today we are going to talk about the possibility of boosting or optimizing our innate immune system this is especially for the adults so we had the discussion yesterday that uh, the children's immune system has speci especially the innate arm is much more uh, dominant and works better and works rapidly and uses gamma delta t cells or sort of memory t cells which rapidly produce interleukin 17a and interferon gamma and that helps them the children and their immune system to clear the pathogen out quickly without getting much symptoms at least in the case of sars cov 2 so the question in our mind is that how can we uh, adults also mimic that kind of a behavior so that is a discussion today there is a lot of uh, risk in modulating our innate arm especially for those who are maybe cancer patients or autoimmune disease patients or people who are on immunosuppressants so this is a discussion that has to be very carefully discussed with your doctor as well if you are going to try to hack your immune system or modulate your immune system so this is the basic um, uh, the danger in this discussion today let's start so first of all from all out of all the links that i have published today in description if you wanted to go to just one link then this is my recommendation this is oregon state university linus pauling institute and this is their research on the immune system especially the innate immune system and what are various foods and vitamins and minerals that would help modulate the immune system now please realize this that everything here is not going to be improving the immune system there are some things here that may actually reduce the function of the immune system so when you read it please read it carefully to see what kind of effect is specific dietary component has so uh, my request to you that if you don't read or touch upon any of the links then at least read this one so with this let's start our discussion so what we are going to talk about is the <clears throat> excuse me innate immune system so we already know we had that discussion yesterday that children are able to defend better because of a rapid response by their immune system so the question is what happens to adults and we do have rapid response as well with our innate arm but that is not very strong and optimal and then we end up in our adaptive arm which would take a few days for example 7 to 14 days and eventually primarily antibody response appears in some people cytotoxic response appears and so adults from the study yesterday we saw that when adults go more towards adaptive arm they are at a disadvantage so we are trying to see if we can mimic children so objective what are we going to do today we're going to see how do we strengthen the epithelial barriers so that is the the surface cells of the respiratory system and the barrier that they make for the entry of the pathogen can we improve that barrier function so that's one can we improve antioxidant capabilities of the cells in the respiratory system can we strengthen the cell membranes so that the virus finds it difficult to enter those membranes can we increase the nk cells so nk cells are one type of gamma delta t cells that children have and they are more active and i've been talking about this for some time that children have more t cells in number plus their t cells are more active as well we adults have less t cells in number plus our t cells are usually less active as well and then on top of it various chemicals and foods and other things can actually reduce our t cells as well most importantly stress stress causes uh, adrenaline 
and noradrenaline to be released or epinephrines to be released. These are stress hormones. Epinephrine, norepinephrine are known to downregulate the function and number of NK cells. So imagine this, that we are stressed out because of maybe we are in pandemic, we are locked in, we are in the house, we are social activities reduced, our financial uh, systems are impacted. Uh, so there is a lot of stress just because of the pandemic. Then there is stress that we are not meeting others, we are alone, we are uh, at home. So that also has stress. Then on top of that, we are really not going for exercises or gyms are not open with that much of a care. So there is a lot of such things that actually reduces the activity level plus increases the stress level, which in turn causes the release of epinephrines, which in turn cause the reduction of natural killer cells. So that is an important thing to keep in mind. So how do we increase the natural killer cells? I think in, in general, all of us nowadays have less natural killer cells because of stress. Increase the gamma delta T cell function. So once we have the natural killer cells, uh, we saw yesterday that in adults, the NK cells or gamma delta memory T cells do not function that well. So how do we trigger them to function better? Then how do we modulate autophagy? Autophagy is a process in which a cell would kill itself when it is infected. Autophagy is a double-edged sword. It can actually cause damage if we have more autophagy going on. Because what happens is when autophagy or the destruction, self-destruction of cells increase as a result of inf um, infection and inflammation, then some of those cells can become dysregulated and become cancerous cells. On the other hand, it is also a problem that if some cells that have become infected do not kill themselves, then they can also become cancerous cells or become dysregulated. So we have to find a way that autophagy is not getting out of balance. So again, uh, as I said before, the discussion today is sort of risky discussion as well. So please be careful and discuss with your doctor when you're talking about various things here. And then how do we improve phagocytosis? And we saw that yesterday with children's innate arm that their innate arm actually does immediate phagocytosis by a dendritic cell much better than our arms. So these are the basic things that we need to cover today. What are we talking about? Which cells? So we are going to talk about macrophages, dendritic cells, neutrophils. Of course, I forgot to make the... Uh, so here it is, the gamma delta cells or the natural killer cells, epithelial cells, which are part of the barrier, and then complement proteins, which are part of the uh, innate arm. So the, this is what we are going to talk about. We are not talking about the adaptive arm. Absolutely, I just uh, looked at a comment, sleep. Sleep is very, very important. All right, so with this, let's start. So I've said this caution before. So who are the folks who are the people who should be extra careful with this discussion? So folks where gamma delta T cells are actually abnormal. For example, uh, type one diabetics have gamma delta T cells involvement. So please do not activate your gamma delta T cells because that would increase the intensity of the disease. Similarly, rheumatoid arthritis patients have generally all autoimmune diseases, but these are more specially uh, folks that need to be careful. Rheumatoid arthritis patients have gamma delta cell dysregulation so if we try to activate them or hack them, we can actually end up causing more damage. Uh, MS patient, multiple sclerosis patient, their gamma delta T cells are also involved in interleukin-17 and, inter and interferon gamma release and other cytokine releases are involved there. Psoriasis patients and then um, irritable bowel disease uh, patient. Generally, once again, autoimmune disease patients should be careful when they are going to look at what we are doing here. Now, activating and increasing the immune cells can exacerbate or trigger autoimmune diseases and even cancer. So be careful. Now, let's start our discussion. How can we start improving our innate arm? 
So first thing, the barrier function of our respiratory system. So imagine that this is a slice of our trachea or any other airway. And here it has surface epithelial cells. I did not make the whole of it. What we want from these cells are two things. Number one, between the cells, there are gaps. So just imagine if there are, imagine my hand. So let's say this is one cell and this is another cell. And when they are, when they are near each other, there is a gap between them. And normally that gap has to be closed so tightly that nothing can pass through this, including the pathogens. So the, <laughs> excuse me, so that is called the barrier function. Barrier function of the, of the respiratory epithelium has to be strong, number one. Number two, mm -hmm. we want the cell itself to be strong as well. These are the first line of the cells that are exposed to the pathogen. So we want them to be strong. We want their membranes to be strong. We want their membranes to be fluid and flexible and strong with the proper uh, proteins and proper um, uh, enzymes in them so they can defend themselves. So how do we do that? And I have, for every single one of these, I have the studies here. So this is a study that I'm going to now use here. So Mediterranean diet, especially olive oil, rich diet provides strength to the barrier function of the respiratory epithelium. And this helps with COPD and asthma as well. On the other hand, Western diet, as we are used to, of refined products, these uh, are less protective of the epithelium and more prone towards asthma and COPD or breach of the epithelial system. So Mediterranean diet, if I think that would be cool actually to eat it. I love Mediterranean diet. Olive oil is very, very important in that. Fruits and vegetables. Fruits and vegetables. Again, here is the study and I have the links there. Uh, in this study, they talked about the Mediterranean diet, Western diet, and then the role of increased fruits and vegetables in our food and their protective function on the epithelial barrier. So fruits and vegetables, omega-3 fatty acids. So we talked about this day before yesterday. So omega-3 fatty acids are very important for the intact barrier function. And I think we can understand that um, omega-3 would help with the not only inflammation, but they help keep the cells um, in a more fluid and flexible state, which is really important. Imagine if I'm trying to join these two hands together and if they are all rigid and made up of iron or something, I cannot really touch them. But if they are more fluid and gooey, they can kind of smash together easily. So omega-3 are important for barrier function maintenance. Vitamin E. Vitamin E is uh, one of the vitamins that are really important especially for the antioxidant function, vitamin C, antioxidant function. And I had done a discussion four months ago that could vitamin C help in COVID-19. In that discussion, there was another video I had done, could vitamin D help with uh, COVID-19? Somehow the vitamin D video became more popular, but vitamin C mechanism is also discussed and vitamin C is important. So here vitamin C is important for the barrier function maintenance. How does it do that? It offers the antioxidant properties, plus it helps the cell membrane to become stronger. So the cell membrane itself becomes uh, rather strong and that becomes easier for the cell to protect itself. Of course, vitamin D, and we have talked about vitamin D so many times that I, I wanna now go through what are the things to do more than what are their mechanisms. Then another very important thing is sodium butyrate with vitamin D. This combination causes the cells to have more AMP. AMPs are antimicrobial peptides. What are these things? These are small molecules that can be released or are present on the surface of the cells. And they are antimicrobial. What, what does that mean? Enveloped viruses like SARS-CoV-2. Fortunately, it is an enveloped virus, so we can attack it. And the bacteria, 
or fungus or other such things. These antimicro antimicrobial peptides kind of cause punctures in their in the membranes of the pathogen. Plus, the peptide would go into the cell and cause the genetic system to be become disrupted. So antimicrobial peptides are increased when we take vitamin D with sodium butyrate. Now, sodium butyrate is a prescription drug, and it is mostly given for uh, folks who have urea cycle issue, issues. So it is not something that we can just go and take it over the counter. But I thought it was important to discuss it at least, that this actually helps with the barrier function as well. And finally, healthy protein diet. Why, why would we have healthy protein diet? So uh, I am seeing here somebody saying that is your video bad? Is 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 there a problem with the uh, with the re relay? So I hope that uh, you are able to watch it correctly. Okay, all right. So uh, continuing on. Why healthy protein diet? Look, almost majority of our, our cells and their molecules or the enzymes present in them are proteins. So just like in our body, our muscles are proteins and they make us, they help us move within the cells. The things that are functioning are mostly proteins. So imagine now we have innate arm and we have the barrier and the barrier has to uh, keep itself intact, which means it has to produce more uh, membrane uh, proteins, it has to produce more enzymes, it has to produce the junctional proteins that allow the cells to be roped together and glued together. All of those things are proteins. So if we are not taking proteins in the correct quantities, for example, sometimes it is uh, people are in, let's say, uh, impoverished uh, environment, and there is nutritional deficiency. Sometimes there is liver cirrhosis or liver disease where the proteins are not made correctly. So there can be many reasons that protein can be deficient. And if the protein, eating protein is less then our cellular function, all cellular function, especially in this context, the barrier function and the immune cell function will go down. So healthy protein diets are important. Then now let's look at one single cell. That may be an immune cell or that may be a, an innate, uh, sorry, the respiratory epithelium cell. The cell's membrane has to become strong enough not to allow the virus to come in or to re resist the virus to come in. How does that happen? Of course, one main thing that we've been talking about is hydroxychloroquine. Hydroxychloroquine enables the cell to, to resist the entry of the virus. And there are many other drugs as well. These are virus entry blocker drugs. <clears throat> you, you have seen, for example, bromhexine or TMPRSS2 blockers or camostat mesylate. Hydroxychloroquine is one of them. So if I wrote all of them over here, I would say hydroxychloroquine, bromhexine, camostat mesylate, and other such drugs. Vitamin C is essential for the cell's membrane's health. Why? Because when a cell has antioxidants produced in it, or sorry, not antioxidant, re reactive oxygen species produced in it, those reactive oxygen species attack everywhere in the cell, including the cell membrane. And when they attack the cell membrane, they damage it. They kind of take various parts of the cell membrane lipids and they kind of weld them together, creating holes in the cell membrane which causes the cell membrane's function and integrity to be disrupted. That causes the cell to die easily. Vitamin D would act as an antioxidant and reduce the chances of the cell membrane's integrity to be, to be gone. So vitamin C is good. Vitamin D, of course, we know that vitamin D directly affects the epithelial stability. So can you imagine that vitamin D is so important Similarly, vitamin A is also important because it causes the cell membrane to become a little bit more stronger than usual. So, so now we have gone from how do we have this bigger tissue 
behave better from there to one individual cell and saw how can one cell become better. Then if we continue on, this is the important thing. So now we are talking about gamma delta T cells. Uh, NK cell is one type of gamma delta T cell, which are very, very important in children. They are more in number. They are more active in children as well. And that is how children actually uh, handle COVID-19 much better. It is not necessary that this behavior reflects in all kinds of infections. There are other infections where children actually get more severe form than us adults. But here, at least in the case of SARS-CoV-2, children do better because their NK cells are better. So how do we get better NK cells? So first of all, first of all, stress causes the NK cells to be produced in less in number and to function less. Why? Because of epinephrines, as I said before. Now, with stress, sleep as well, sleep deprivation or irregular um, less sleep or less rest, restful sleep is also very, very dangerous. So the first thing for our NK cells to become better is for us to be less stressed out. Now, how can we be less stressed out? I think there are, there are lots of things to be discussed there. It would become a longer discussion here. I would leave that part, but less stress, better sleep is the first thing. Then exercise. And it is interesting that, and I have the studies here, so I'm not talking about these things just all by my own uh, So we will go to those. So all the studies are here that I'm talking about. Exercise they saw uh, less rigorous, not so rigorous that the exercise itself causes the tissue damage, which then causes inflammation, which then causes us to be a little bit more prone to the infection. Uh, if you can still hear me. Okay, so I'm, I hope I'm back. The um, internet connection had gone down for a few seconds. So let me know when you can... So am I back? Can you hear me? Okay, awesome. So let's continue. So exercise, moderate exercise or yoga. Do yoga. Yoga is awesome. Strength training. And again, strength, stamina, building training, but not to the point where we start becoming uh, harmed. So look, the professional athletes who do this, that is fine. They, they, are, they are cut out for that. They have been doing this. They are ready. Their body is adapted. But for us, let's say if I set, get up today and start doing the uh, more severe form of exercises, I might actually end up cause more damage, end up causing more damage. So, and then massage. Massage is known to increase the NK cell count and function. For forest bathing. In the forest bathing, so there is this uh, effect of forest bathing trips on human immune fun function. This is a Japanese study where they had gone to forest and what they found out was that going to forest and having the aroma or the oils released by the um, by the uh, by the trees actually increase activate and increase the nk cells and that effect stays for up to 30 days and they had then done more studies to figure out is it just being a tourist helps or is it the forest itself so they sent some people to cities and other people to forest and they found out that forest bathing is actually very useful for NK cells activity. So forest bathing is important. Vitamin A is crucial for NK cells to be active. 
Zinc, our friend with hydroxychloroquine. Zinc is crucial for NK cell activity. So can you imagine that hydroxychloroquine has, and the zinc had other advantages than the antiviral effect here. So zinc is very important for NK cell activity. Omega-3, so here is a counterpoint. Omega-3, as much as it is very useful for the barrier function and the cell membrane integrity, omega-3s are known in higher quantity, are known to reduce NK cells function. So just use them in a more moderate way. Vitamin C and other oxidants, they actually increase the activity of NK cells. So if you see here, this is a study. Vitamin C and immune system. So here, vitamin C supports epithelial barrier function. We talked about it. Vitamin C accumulates in phagocytic cells like neutrophils and can enhance chemotaxis and phagocytosis, innate arm function. It also needed for apoptosis and clearance of the uh, spent neutrophil or the dead immune cells or the exhausted immune cells. So vitamin, th uh, vitamin C is very, very important. Here, there is one more study here. Enhancement of natural killer cell activity and T and B cell function by buffered vitamin C in patients exposed to toxic chemicals. So in this study, what they did was, <coughs> my apologies, what they did was they had looked at those patients who were exposed to chemicals and their natural killer cells had gone down. And then they gave them vitamin C and they found that the natural killer cell activity had bounced back. Then here, this is, I believe, another study, which is about the <clears throat> dietary intake of vitamin C, and it protects for COPD and asthma. But again, the protection mechanism is similar that we are seeking today with SARS-CoV-2. And then uh, here is a quick note for what is a buffered vitamin C. So buffered vitamin C, mainly calcium ascorbate, that has been shown to be well absorbed and tolerated in the gut like other mineral as, um, ascorbates. So buff in that study, I had shown they had used buffered vitamin C. So vitamin C is very important for natural killer cells. Then white button mushrooms are very important to activate and proliferate the natural killer cells. Epinephrine reduces the natural killer cell number and activity. So that is the stress side of the things. And interestingly, BCG vaccine increases the activity of the natural killer cells. <laughs> so good comment here. Uh, Myron says all mushrooms work. So especially the white button mushrooms. So that is about the natural killer cells. So mindfulness, yoga, exercises, massage, forest bathing, um, less stress, better sleep, vitamin A, vitamin C, zinc, omega-3 in moderate amounts, they are all very, very good for natural killer cells to become active and to become available. Then, as we discussed yesterday, Children had one more thing, and that was they were producing more interferon gamma in the beginning. So interferon gamma can actually be induced. However, please realize that interferon gamma, if extra induced, can cause cancers. It would cause proliferation. So here is a very quick, I uh, saw the study, plant-based foods, they reduce interferon gamma, which reduces the chance of breast cancer by 15%. So here I should have actually said that, hey, don't eat plant-based food so that you have more interferon gamma. But um, I think that we should stay away from trying to modulate interferon gamma wing or part of the immune system because unnecessary interferon gamma can actually promote cancer formation. Then protein deficiency. As I said before, if we have less proteins, then we'll make less cytokines, we'll make less interleukin-17, we'll make less interferon gamma, we'll make less good membranes, we'll make less enzymes. So the whole bodily function goes down. This is why protein intake has to be good. If proteins are less, we have less cytokines, we have less complement, complement is part of the innate arm, and we have less phagocytosis. 
actually everything becomes slow in its function. With this, <clears throat> I forgot to write here, management of diabetes is very important. Diabetes, if uncontrolled, means we have sugar, but we cannot use it. That means our cells are hungry. They are deprived of nutrition in the presence of nutrition. So our body has sugars or carbohydrates, but cannot use it. So all body functions will go down, including the immune system. This is why diabetics get lots of infections and their wounds heal less. So if somebody is diabetic, they should, they should, they should make sure they control their diabetes nowadays. <clears throat> then the lymphocytes, generally the lymphocytes. So we talked about the NK cells before. That is type of a lymphocyte as well. So other gamma delta T cells, vitamin B6 is very important for activation of the lymphocytes. Vitamin B6 helps <clears throat> with the proliferation. Proliferation means increase in number. And we need that. So vitamin B6 helps with the proliferation of the um, lymphocytes and differentiation. Differentiation means becoming more mature to do their function. Folate and vitamin B12 is very important as well. Why is this important? I am so sorry that. So folate and vitamin B12, look, when our cells are replicating, when our cells are dividing, their RNAs and DNAs are being formed. And for that formation, we need vitamin B12 and folate. So if we want more of the innate arm system to work, if we want our cells to function better, we need to have these things. But once again, if somebody is taking chemotherapy, if somebody is immunosuppressed, if somebody is trying to reduce their cell divisions because of cancers, then they should not take these things without talking with the doctor. And finally, the last thing, zinc is important, selenium is important, iron is important, copper is important. All of these substances in the right amounts need to be present for us to have a better innate arm. So the discussion today, this is the discussion for today. The discussion today is more towards how do we tilt our immune system balance towards the innate arm, especially the gamma delta T cells. And that is what is the uh, nutrition and various things that uh, most of these are over the counter. Some of them are by prescription, but I don't think we need them. So this is the discussion today. Tomorrow we will have our open forum. Uh, I wanted to say thank you. So yesterday, I think uh, we had so many people who had sent me a donation and support. So thank you very much for that. Thank you for your support. It really helps. And uh, we'll see each other tomorrow. Please like, subscribe, and share. And I'll see you tomorrow for open forum. And, and one more thing, sorry, I'm, I'm almost closing. This is only a beginning of the innate arm modulation. There are so many things that can be done to modulate that I could not cover them all. So if you are aware of some of the things that would help modulate, especially gamma delta T cells, then please put them in the comment. It will be useful for all of us. So thank you. Good night and see you tomorrow.